All right, so we have these things on the table real quick. One side says builder, the other side says breaker. You're gonna need these, so if you don't have one, make sure that you grab one. We have a bunch up here and there's a bunch on the tables out there. All right, so, all right, cool. So um, builder versus breaker. So my name is Brett Harden. Um, I'm going to be a moderator. Um, this is my Twitter handle. So the reason I gave you guys that, um, other than self-publication, is to make sure that you guys have it. I represent you. So this is, we expected a lot more people, but you guys can probably just yell at us. Um, but if you want, you can tweet something you don't feel comfortable uh, talking about it, and I'll look. I have a thing that I monitor constantly to make sure I get some time. questions. And we have plenty of beer, especially for this audience. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Maybe not everybody can have one. Yeah, maybe, maybe not everyone. Maybe they can't have three. Oh man, and we also have yeah, we have rum for the serious drinkers. So uh, let's let's introduce our uh, our. Have you, have, who here has been to a builder versus breaker talk before? All right, two people, cool. So if you're not familiar with this format, this is something that these guys developed. Um, it's basically one person represents the builder, the developer of the software, and the second person represents the security breaker person of the software. And we throw up subjects and we just have them like fight it out. And what happens is typically in, in an audience like this, the builder, the, the builder typically loses because of the audience and who's obviously in the audience. But we'll see if, uh, if we can't change that. So you're not true. Do you have a microphone? Okay, if you want to talk, you should speak into that. So, um, John Rose, this guy's going to represent our builder. Um, hey, there you go. Yes, thank All you. All right, now we're getting the spirit. All right. I need a beer. Breakers don't exist without builders. This is a fact. All right, so. Why is that? We'll get to that. <laughs> so, qual qualification. Okay, so it's already started. Yeah, it's already started. So, qualifications. John built PayPal in two hours. Um, and he's pushed to 2,470 open source pushes to all kinds of different contributions. On the other side of the house, we have Matt Conda. Matt Conda is representing the breaker. Uh, he broke up the CIA whenever he was 12, and then he deleted his arrest record when he was 16. So that's, that's who you have here representing uh, you guys out there. Quick poll, who in the room is builders? Raise your hand. Awesome. This is actually awesome. Do you see how many builders there? Yeah, I talked to all of them. Awesome. And breakers, you have to raise your hand. Yeah, so basically you just insulted the majority of the room, just saying that. So, all right, cool. So, how does this format work? Well, it's basically one question, we debate that topic, and then we have one audience member respond. And so it's basically, if they say something that you guys don't like, you guys just say, no, that's whatever, I'm gonna respond to this, and you just take it and you run with it. And it's my job also to shut you up very fast, so you, you get to your point really quick, okay? All right, and then we vote, we drink. If you guys want a beer or rum now, come on up. You guys can grab a beer and everything's cool. All right, so John, why don't you talk about what the builder's concerns actually are? All right, so as a builder, my, uh, I get paid. My boss judges my performance based on meeting deadlines. Um, Good man. There we go. Yeah! <laughs> See, somebody's done that, so more people can come. All right, so, yeah, basically my goal is, is meeting deadlines, meeting gates, building functionality for customers, making sure they, they ship on time and that they work properly. So if I'm late on shipping code, it's an issue. If I have problems and need to rework things, it's an issue. I'm motivated by dates and functionality. All right, cool. So the reason we're doing the concern aspect is that if you're a builder in the room, you can relate to this. This is what your deadlines and your goals are. This is what your boss is driving behind you. Breakers sometimes forget what actually drives you, and so this is why we're putting this up here. On the flip side, we're now gonna have the breaker talk about what he cares about, and that's for the builders in the room to understand exactly what their concerns are. Well, I'm gonna find vulnerabilities, I'm gonna exploit them, I'm gonna get data out, I'm gonna have a good time. It's pretty simple, actually. If you need a mic, I can just talk, right? Can anybody not hear me? Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. yeah All right, cool, cool. awesome. It's really loud. <laughs> breaker. All right, and so as we all know, the main reason why breakers do stuff is for the lulls, and we also love capitalization. All right, so let's get in the mood. So the first thing that we did is we took a lot of different tweets that uh, builders and breakers tweeted, and so just to kind of show you and get excited up on stage, and we'll start representing the, the different personas, they're going to read what the tweet is in the context of who they are. So this guy, remember, is the builder, and this guy is the breaker, okay? Here we go. Developers will never ever learn, they'll never improve. They just keep making the same mistakes over and over again. That's all of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, breakers are just good at ranting, right? They have zero contributions, 
They don't do anything constructive, basically, and then they just bash their friends think they're cool. Insurance. If you're a developer and you don't know what a wasp is, you're just not paying attention. You're choosing not to know what your head is saying. Okay, here's the problem, right? InfoSec pros, pen testers, whatever, they're more interested in, quote, app sec than actually programmers, right? How do you change that? Never gonna change. The developer who wrote this code should be taken out in the street and beaten. <laughs> really? Somebody may know who this is, but we just we covered to discuss <laughs> innocent. Agile, most security guys are useless. They just can't get it. All right, so now that now that we've gotten the mood, you guys understand what personas and how they interact with one another. Let's get this party started. Feel free to be. Okay, so ready? Yeah. Fight. The cloud makes me secure. Builder, please represent. So the cloud definitely makes you more secure. We have in-house IT people, but they're you know as good as they are. We outsource to a company. Their whole focus is availability, integrity, keeping things running. It's so much better for us to offload that, focus on building what we want to build, and you know the core value proposition of whatever software we're building. So the cloud definitely makes us more secure, and it's great. You, you didn't. You said availability and integrity. You didn't say anything about security. You don't know what the cloud providers. Right? Okay, well, is that kind of related? There's no transparency into what the cloud the cloud providers are giving you in terms of security. We have SLAs. You can't change what they're giving. We have SLAs. They we know what they're going to give us. It's nine five. It's great. I already know you want this microphone, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the reality is, yeah, no, it's it's way better for us to outsource to the clouds, and we don't have to worry about it. They're going to take. It. They're a trusted you're Just pushing your problems to somebody else. Sure, fine. That's why they're there. And we're not going to solve every possible problem, so we have trusted partners that are going to do it for us. Trusted, but not responsible. We're responsible. We have SLAs. SLAs about uptime. SLAs about security. I have to check that inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, has anybody represented this? Like, has anybody actually talked to their company and had this argument? Dudes. Okay, so developers don't think that the cloud is secure then? <laughs> oh no, you don't want this. Here. Alright, I'm gonna cut you off, so make your point brief. Not all clouds are considered equal. I do think when you look at general purpose clouds like like IS, like Amazon, um, you're basically putting a lot of trust in your herd and trans transparency, etc. When you have a SaaS though, when you get up high on the stack, that company potentially lives or dies by how securely you do it. Yeah, exactly. So they, they have the potential to actually be more secure because they have less general purpose networks, less general purpose computers, they can target things, harden things, monitor things. So cloud binary bit is kind of sloppy. It depends. Everything's uniform too that they control, so it's much easier for them to manage it versus our in house IT guys have you know all sorts of systems. So are you paying for Firefox? That's what you're saying? Everything you do is in a secure cloud? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you I'm paying for it. All right, so raise up the thing. Builder one, breaker one. Point it at me so I can see a general consensus. Builder, you're always going to hold up. We have to vote too. We breaker. have to breaker. All right, so wow, look at that. It's actually kind of even. No, it's not. That's a breaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so real quick, leave them up. Leave them up real fast. If you are showing the side that you represent, flip it. Yeah, I saw a lot of flipping. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. So, next one. So wait, who won that? Uh, right, it looked like a dead tie. Well, okay, so what we've done in the past is when there's a tie, the audience drinks. Oh, okay, well then, Ooh. cheers. Still I represent you, so I have to drink also. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk, we were, we, No, yeah, yeah, we want the microphone pass. So, if you have something to say, we'll run and grab the microphone. But we're moving on to the next topic. Is it about cloud? <laughs> you can talk, go. Yeah, let's hear it. I was at a, a no-fluff just stuff conference sitting with some guys at the table. Wait, you and, went to no fluff and you're here. Yeah, and then we're you guys. <laughs> um, so What's fluff? McDonald's has Wi-Fi. And delicious hamburgers. What do they know about Wi-Fi? They're a hamburger fast food joint. It's not their core business. So it's not their core business. So they outsource Wi-Fi to the some guy, guys I was sitting at the table with, AT&T. That's what they do. 
So it makes total sense for them to outsource because it's not their core business, it's not their expertise, whereas AT&T, it is their core business, it is their expertise, and they're gonna do a better job. That's my argument for this one. Yeah. Are you a builder? Well, who's selling a secure platform? There's a breaker. <laughs> <laughs> and it begins. And the what did you say, Marcy? What did you say, Marcy? But who's selling a secure platform? You know, I would love that. Firepost. The secure platform, but who's selling that? Yeah, okay, so let's move on. <laughs> All right, so customers, you know what? If customers care about security, they would actually ask for it. So, Breaker, take it. Security is part of quality. You can't deliver software without thinking about security. You, ha you can't deliver software without thinking about performance. You can't deliver software without thinking about design. It's not true. Keep talking. <laughs> Your customer is not well served to deliver software without thinking about performance and design. And therefore, security should be part of what you're thinking about up front. It is part of the package. It's part of what the customer expects. All right, so I'm a developer, and I build code based on requirements. So if those requirements need extra special security, that takes extra time and effort. just normal security, like basic core security? All right, so we build as, as the best we can, and we have a, you know, development process that includes some security checks and things like that. But if you want all this extra security stuff, you have to explicitly ask for it. And a lot of people don't ask for it. You just assume you're going to get it. And it's work and effort, right? Why would I assume I'm getting all this stuff for free? I mean, you have people already grabbing my Like They're like, you got it. They know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> right so Are you a builder or a breaker? Uh, we'll do both. Uh, which one do you represent most? Yeah. Uh, exactly. All of their builders right now. Good. Okay. Right. Uh, so right now, I'm back to build a boat. I like that. Make us look bad. As a builder, <laughs> make the fellow builders look like idiots. Because when somebody builds a building, they don't say, well, you didn't say it had to operate in 1G field. And when somebody builds, it, builds a car, they don't say, well, it had to stop too. Come on. Build it. That's there totally are, there not are, true. There, there are think about the in the environment that are part of the environment. They're going to operate. Nobody tells you to pass it on a computer because you know you're writing software. It's going to be on a computer. <laughs> okay? So they can stop as somebody can right. uh, take over the control of flow of gravitation. is a requirement. It's always there whether it's on paper or not. Otherwise, he wins. So, and so, so real quick. Hold on. That's, that's good. good. That's good. That's good. Hold on. I, I will respond to that. that. <laughs> All right. All right. So as a product, I was a product manager at one point, and as a product manager, I had developers multiple times tell me, quote, this was not in the requirements document. Yeah. Okay. Multiple times. So you can't just say, you can't just it's yell. Because it's in the security standard. It's not in the requirements. No, 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 no. So you're saying that the developer then can argue and just say, oh, well, you know, it's not, it's not in there, so I don't need to read it. No, I'm saying the developer they should. can't argue that because it's in the standard. It's not in the function. Well, the same thing is, he said, from all of these, don't uh, expect the car to be able to break. But the limitation is based is what security is. That's what we're not defined. So I'm actually a, a breaker helping builders. And that's the problem we have here. I'm going to say it here now. Because as long as we say builder versus breakers, we don't really prove the build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that towards the end. Sorry. All right. Go ahead. As a builder, I've told my client, this is a mistake. You shouldn't do this. Open this up to just be anybody. There's the least access rule that you should only have access to stuff that you just need, that's fine, no more open it up. Yeah, but it authenticates your Twitter, so I think it's okay. <laughs> okay, so can I make a comment? This guy had a, had a statement about their security requirements, or not even requirements, security standards, is what you said, right? So where does that end? And how much do I need to do? Right. Because no customer asked me, so sure, we're gonna do the basic stuff, but it's like, it's like, okay, does this need to scale to a billion hosts, or just, you know, um, well, John, what it needs to do is it needs to make sure that it's protected when you lost about 10. Okay, well, cool. Yeah, it's about 10. What about PCI? Yeah, yeah. I guess that's it. All right, so we're going to uh, raise, your, raise your hands. Who thinks you win, build or breaker? Which is the argument? All right, breaker definitely won that one. John. Sorry, you represent the builder very poorly. Okay, so now when do you buy some No, 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 I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. You're going to need to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you already you already made it. This isn't the presidential debate. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So uh, next one. Breaches are cheaper 
than securing code. Oh my god, you really think that? This is the builder's representation. Go! This is true. <laughs> So obviously the most large, massive organizations need to do a lot of stuff to make sure they're secure because those breaches cost a ton of money. But for the average organization, uh, I get we get hacked into, they break into our WordPress site or whatever. I can call this company, and there's a couple out there, I've been researching that, they will fix our website, revert from our backup code and everything else, and it's like 500 bucks or $1,000. Boom, I'm back to the good code, everything's clean. You know how much it costs? I try to get a pen test, it's like 10 grand. It's gonna take these guys weeks. It's easier just to revert back and, and deal with it. And plus, I'm barely even targeted. Nobody cares about our stuff. They're not gonna hack into it. We're not controversial. The average cost of a breach is, is like five to seven million dollars. Isn't that what the reason? I don't know if I believe that. that people really tell you. Because I just pay a couple hundred bucks, it's clean. So, so one question real quick. The builders, can you guys remember raise your hands again? Um, if you're a builder, and you work, well, actually keep your hands up real quick because I want to see how many hands are up. Who works for an organization that has over 500 people? Perfect. Okay, interesting. So, John, your point is probably yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, these guys. Are so, how much does it cost to your clients that now think you're incapable of yeah. opportunity? So, you're a security person, you should have a metric around that. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But so, so, yeah, what is it? Look at that. Reverting from your backups and build it and try to bring the site back up is one thing, but losing credit card data or sensitive information is a whole different game. What if you outsource that to like Stripe? Yeah, we don't touch that stuff. Bam! Done! Yeah, I don't care. Alright, did you want to respond, Gregor? No. No fight, no fight. This is like a given. Yeah. You already lost it. Alright, so who wants Breaker or Builder? I want to ask the Shaw question. drink. The rum. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's I want right. to ask this question in a developer conference because I think we'll get a lot of different answers. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of developers in the room. Yeah, but these are these guys are biased. They're in Maps. <laughs> See, actually, yeah, there is some bias here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just does the audience agree with that? Yeah. All right. Security people don't have a good story about the, the number. Of That's right. There's no. Yeah, there's no I mean, metric around it. Number cool that I've ever had. <laughs> there, there is a paper. There is a paper that actually says that the cost of SQL injection bug uh, being exploited is seven point five million dollars. That was five. last year. This year is five. Where do we collect? <laughs> Where, <where's that? laughs> well, you stole the credit card numbers. You find drop sites and then you order a bunch. Of, okay. Anyways, okay. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> you can do it. Agile versus security. Agile is a disaster. Agile is an excuse to just. I think the builder was supposed to start with this, but you know what? I'm going to let you have one because he started like the past three weeks ago. Go ahead. Thanks for interrupting. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, this is obvious, right? If you're doing agile, you're pushing five times a day. You're doing more than five times. I don't care how often you do it. Fast. When am I supposed to stop and look at the code and figure out what's going on? How? how I, this process is just absolutely not conducive to any kind of control process. Yes. And you use it as an excuse. It's like a crutch to deliver shoddy code as fast as you can. Yeah, but we can fix it as fast as <laughs> yes. Continue improvement, right? We just push it out. You can find it. You just push it out. It's yeah, like actually, what? you're just committing new security vulnerabilities on top of all that fixing. So you never actually fix anything. You just keep rolling out. Well, so I don't think that's true. I think the problem is that uh, traditional security organizations and consulting groups come in at certain checkpoints at the very end and say, okay, let's get a little pen test done, or the business guy goes, oh yeah, shit, security, we're gonna launch next week, do a pen test, All right? The problem is that, that these security groups don't know how to interface at the, at the pace of agile development, right? We do it with QA, so why QA keeps up for the most part? Why can't security keep up? Why can't security keep up? Agile is just a methodology for development, right? So why can't they be involved at the right point and, and do it? I just think they're stuck in their old ways, right? Do you think do you think that QA, that security, they should be pushed underneath the QA group? Well, QA is much. I'll let you answer that, actually. The security guy. Well, I mean, I think there are certain things about QA that are very, you know, that apply to security also, right? Like, so if you're going to use automated tools and you're going to 
check the, the release of the bill, yeah. QA is already in a place to do that, right? No matter what your development process is. Yeah, they're way better at position than security is, that's for sure. I agree. And you hate us both. <coughs> I do hate so you, you might as you might as well. Slow me down. We might as well we might as well combine forces and I like this idea. Yeah. So what we should do is we should have security report to QA. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know what's cool about that is QA is generally lower paid. So we could probably if we lower the, the salary. <laughs> We can stop bills. And as soon as he's like, well, then you're going to be underneath QA. And he's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, builder breaker, who won? Oh, oh, that's a lot of white. Yeah. That's a lot of white. There you go, there you go, drink this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they can still debate. It's only going to get better. All right, so this next one is kind of, this, uh, kind of a series. It's, it's a general concept of typically what's happening internally with a developer and what's internally happening with a security person. So the developer says, you know what? The breakers, they don't understand development. That's the problem. They don't. They just don't understand development at all. This, of course, <laughs> enrages the security person. And the security person responds with, well, builders need to understand vulnerabilities. That's what needs to happen. So I'm going to let you guys take this. Feel free, whoever wants to yell louder. If you don't understand the bone, how are you going to not introduce it every single day? Hey, I'm going to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, here's the problem, right? Is I think you can train developers in security. We're never going to be experts, but you can definitely train. Writing a report, doing an audit, throwing it there, saying, oh, these are my problems, you're not helping us, right? Why don't you write patches and submit those patches to us? We'll learn as we go, but I think there's a breakdown in the communication and the process on how you interact. And because of that, you think we don't get it, right? But the reality is also, I'm responsible to understand all this emerging technology and understand how that applies to the business, right? Remember, we're still doing this for money, so we're business, right? We're not a cost center like security. So I have to. Oh! So I have there's to. a reason cost centers exist. They're so I have to, to do, know all this stuff. And if I know all the security stuff too, I don't really need you, do I? I think oh, you need me. Do more training. You definitely need me. Do you think you can train developers security? Yes or no? Yes? Or no. no. Why? Do you want the answer? Yeah, yeah go. Yes. That's the answer. Yes. Absolutely yes. want the answer. Good. Yeah, hand in the micro. Go. Answer. You just be a smart ass. Yeah. Interesting. That's an interesting posture to have as a security person. Yeah, you can't I mean, I was just fucking traveling, doing secure development training to a bunch of guys, and a lot of them got very interested and excited by it and were, were very, you know, they thought it was really cool and actually wanted to go out and get some books and learn more about it just because it excited them. And then there was a lot of other people in the room that were like, my manager made me here. Well, even the ones who are interested next year? Yeah, they, they don't remember that shit. Yeah. Excuse me. So the thing is, if the developers get secure, they wouldn't need a security team to tell them where to mess up. I'm not a security guy. I'm a developer, right? That's why I have security out here. That's a money thing, but... Oh, one at a time, guys. Go. Oh! I think the argument the data security guys have is to say, for example, I'm a developer, right? Go, go learn security. Well, why don't you learn about the development environment? Like, you can't move at your face, and we can't move at our face. Try doing both fucking things at once. You can't. It doesn't work that way. How many security security people 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 below do write code versus how many? No, I do. They contribute no patches to fix the problem. They're just like, oh, you're bad. You suck. Where do all of the tools come from? Hey, do you think do you think uh, security guys write good code? Because I'm a developer and I'll tell you they suck. If you wrote good code, I wouldn't have a job. Do you think Actually, I said that earlier. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you need me, man. You need me. Yeah, I think that John, what John's point is, is that as security people, like when we even write actual code, it's vulnerable. Like there's bugs that we're getting back. Exactly. And so you're asking like somebody's like, hey, uh, Why is that? you know you got days to push it out because people need things because you have conferences talking about your latest hack tool and you gotta get it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think the analogy is I think the analogy is, is that like when anybody in this room asks their like ten year old daughter, hey, how do I drive a car? Right? Yeah, of course not. Well that's why they have GTS. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not 
former builders? Oh, yeah. Is there anybody, any breaker who's never a builder who's in this room? There's got to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's lots. lots. Because all the breakers are here. Phil, you didn't raise your hand. Phil, what did you have to say? You were trying to yell out earlier. Okay. Nothing, not for <laughs> anymore? All right. This is a false dichotomy. You want, in any sports team, you have different positions in the team. You want expertise, confidence, you have a team, or you undermine each other. I mean, I hate to say kumbaya and hug it out, but. But you know, I have like eight uh, projects going on at the same time. time. How am I supposed to like team it with them? I agree with that, but he's right. Whenever I get my app scan, they just give me a paper. Yeah, that PDF. A scanner, a thousand page report. That's for the teamwork. And doesn't lift a finger to help figure out how to fix things. So yeah, what's interesting, what's interesting about what he just brought up, hold on. What's, what's interesting about what he just brought up is that. What that shows you is, is that security teams operate differently. So as a general group, as security people, we've said, hey, you know what, OWASP, let's try to teach, you know, develop, uh, so secure, security developers, right? To some extent, security people should be telling other security people how to actually run security groups, right? Because of what you just said, clearly, you know, his team at, at his thing is not helping him, right? So I did a survey of all my developer friends, about 70 developers. Some I knew, some I didn't, but I, I sent out the survey. So how many of you guys know what OWASP is? About 25%, maybe a little less, had even heard of OWASP. And then of that, a much smaller percentage said they even knew, they knew and understood what the OWASP top 10 is. So does OWASP work? Is it working for AppSec guys or is it working for developers? Like what's the point? Why isn't the security guy in the stand -ups? Why is there a security down, guy in the standups? That's because they don't get agile. They can cover that. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably too busy trying to write papers for the next security Yeah, they're, they're writing. <laughs> actually, they're writing what's really kind of happy to us. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Builders, breakers, someone have one. Builder, come on. You got it now. You know it is. Yeah, drink up, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Builder. Builder. I thought we decided that you need to understand all the rules. Well, clearly the audience thought that you lost that debate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, you just lost Ohio. This is a democratic state. You just lost Ohio. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, next one. This is so good for us. Well, recap. Let's do a recap real quick. All right, so Builder. Well, that's all it's a problem, right? Absolutely. So, I'm going to Yes. Can we change this to WAF plus framework? For sure. Yeah, it's gonna be like, like, why do we have something like Struts but that actually solves that SQLite and fixing the other problems? Okay, I like that. I can go with that. So, WAF plus framework solves the problem. Absolutely, because I'm writing code, I'm writing unique code, right? I have third party libraries that. that do functionality and I can build things faster. And the, the code that I'm writing, that's yeah. kind of code, the value add for, for our customers is the stuff I do. And there's probably bugs there, right? And there's definitely bugs. And there's definitely security bugs as well. The WAF is gonna block a lot of those security bugs. So now I don't have to address them right away. And maybe I can be more competitive by getting the next feature out and before these guys and take more of a market share. So it buys me time and it gets the business moving faster than some other people, and I can, it lowers the risk, in my mind. So the WAF does solve the problem, yeah. The I should change it, by the way, because I know what you're doing now. The WAF, the WAF is a, <laughs> I changed it to WAF plus framework, and then I realized what he was actually saying was Rails because it's the issue. No, right, I'm not sick. A WAF is a band-aid. A WAF is a band-aid. It doesn't fix the fundamental problem. If I bypass the WAF, so what? Yeah, it's mandatory, sure, great, but it helps me. And I don't keep that way. It, it helps you, but it's like a slice. Easily. It's a slice yeah. of what you need to do. If I bypass the WAF, I, I, you're done. And those what about a firewall? Those what about traditional firewalls? If you bypass that, we're done too. The third party libraries you're talking about? That yeah, is a great idea. Side, I love side, it. Side, I heard, side, I heard side, you agree this all of a sudden. I love wait, it. wait, what about a real firewall? Everyone that embraces the network firewall, you're not going to say, well, yeah, patching, we've got to harden all these services. Yeah, you're going to do it, but you have a firewall that's going to protect you from external attacks. Internal's a little different, maybe? I don't know. So, so was, anybody, was, was, anybody, oh, 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 was anybody web application before web application and network? Am I the only one? <laughs> anybody that was in web application security before that were in like network security, right? Okay. If I gave you guys a cable internal to a network that was outside the firewall, how fast did you break in? 
<laughs> what about this guy right here? The breaker over here. The guy with the rum. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he's still on right? Hold on. Be in the website. What the hell? You're going to be in the website. Be in the browser. So if you're running a firewall, does that mean you don't harden any services? I don't need to ask much. And I want to talk about the third of the frameworks, because I think that's an interesting point, right? Frameworks are what, 80% of the code that's running? You don't know if they're secure, you don't know if they're updated. Even if there was a Struts Plus, a Rails Plus that's that did all the security, let's say, that, let's say you find a problem. Does he update the code base to know that he's using the latest so that it's now... Wait, for a framework like third party libraries and apps and stuff like yeah, that? You're using, you're using Rails, right? You're updating Rails when there's a security vulnerability? Mass assignment, did you do that? That's part of the code. Yeah, yeah there was a Brian Bates uh, thing about it in 2007. Yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> so I know a little bit about security, thanks. All right, so, 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 so what do you want to say to me In a best case scenario, though, a WAP only covers part of the problem. Like, there's like logic flaws, but right. WAPs never come back together. Right. Right. Um, when you see a WAP, you just know that they didn't do anything to protect yeah. security. That is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad thing. So you know there's more abilities there. Would you, would you agree, though, that you're raising the very entry and some attackers will just give up before they actually try to reach? So what you're, saying, what you're saying is, is that you're saying that uh, attackers don't actually look for the well, because what? No, it says solves the problem, not, hey, not raises the We put a WAP up in the web in the web scanner, found nothing. Does, does the What did you say? Does the developer need to do protocol validation? I don't know, I thought the framework did that. I don't think they know what that is. No, <laughs> that's the point. There, you're right, there are some logical flaws that the developer needs to know about. But if we can't solve this problem by making the developer know everything, we've got to put well, something Well, no, but I'm saying that a WAP, like, the, in the like when you see a WAP, you say, okay, I might not find cross-site script, or I might not find SQL injection. There's so many flaws that a WAP is never right. even going to sure. protect against. So it doesn't even solve the problem because it's only covering half the problem in the first place. Anyway. Took a wrap up but, it, but it should cover that part of the problem. So developers are in a scan so and they see a bunch of bugs and they have a wrap and they didn't have bugs anymore. Yeah, so it clearly <laughs> solves the problem. <laughs> all right, all right, let's uh, build a breaker. Who won? Uh, yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Nobody thinks the wrap is the solution. Part of the solution. Part of the solution. I want to start. I agree with that. So this is the last one. I'm gonna let you guys fight, and then we have some general things that we want to cover. But I'm gonna let you guys fight about this, which is uh, false positives are a necessary evil. Uh, Breaker, why don't you take this one first? And this is somebody brought. Actually, you brought this up earlier, right? Um, you, when they start arguing, you'll understand why I'm connecting it. Go. So if I do a, a pen test, or I, I'm running a bunch of tools, I'm doing all kinds of different things to find vulnerabilities in your application. <laughs> There are things that I can't know for sure if they're real or not. If I don't show those to you, I'm leaving you exposed to other people who might not be as so kind as I am. Kind as you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have to report everything that could potentially. The problem is, right? Here. Here's the problem. I engage with security. They run all these network and application website scanners and other whatever they've got, right? They do everything. And then I get a thousand page PDF. It's a lot of information, that's great. It's a lot of information. I can't import it into, you know, Jira, which I use for tracking, you know, bugs and stuff like that. It doesn't even go to re into Remedy for like the IT guys for their stuff. It's so much information and it's all high risk and you know the sky's falling into the world and stuff. What do I do with it? There's so much noise there that I can't even deal with it at all, which is why I have a lot of This is why there's a lot of <laughs> software in the first place, because if you came and made it this and passed list and priorities over you just figured out what the problem. Okay. Or maybe, maybe it's a problem tool. Why what is it so hard for the hackers to learn how to file a book? Yes, thank you. Can you just, you know what, just, just file a bug. Hey, hey, back to your comment earlier. File a bug, show up at stand up, we'll talk about it. The product manager will tell me what's important and we'll figure out when to do it. And See, there we I go. Favor, I, so I, I, so I, I did system in for 10 years and uh, was always irritated that even just simply as a system in, we were brought into the process at the very end. It's, oh, we need four terabytes. And it's like, 
when were we involved in the scoping of this project a year ago? So from security, same thing. Bring us in earlier. Yes, I want to be in the stand-up. I'm not going to... So wait, wait, wait. Say That's, calling, but they don't need to bring you in. You should go to them. Yeah, come to me. Is, but I can't go to eight stand-ups. I can't go to 12 where I, I'm, I can't go in because it's the development meeting and security is a part of the process later. So the process is broken. And I've been at some companies that let us go and I've been in others where I've asked, can I please go to the you know code reviews and that kind of thing, peer review, and they're like, well, no, that you know you're not part of that team. So that's one of the security things that we were that I was bringing up earlier, which is that sometimes security people need to be trained also, right? It's like clearly, it's got a beer. I think that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple of beers to get out for good questions. We yeah. forgot about that. It's All right, next. It's a the process. Okay. But I guys are like, questions. <laughs> <laughs> So I think Braver's going to stop being scared of these and then yeah. the actionable, actionable vulnerabilities that, yeah. that, that, that the developer can fix. Right? Yeah. Don't hand over the thousand page report. Yeah. Braver put the work in. Thousand page PDF. Yeah. I sort of get those two jobs over and validate. People yeah. still do vulnerabilities. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a whole industry. It's called consulting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have like 20 I'm sorry, what is that? I'm not sure. Not sure. All right, so let's let's wrap it up and let's move on a little bit. So um, just to kind of, sorry. Oh yeah, sorry, voting. Who won? Builder breaker. How do I do a false positives? Come on, builder, obviously. All right, so if you vote, voted, keep them up, builder clearly won. Yeah, obviously. Why are you here? So you don't want us to report it and then. So real quick, raise your, raise your thing again. You're scared. If you so voted shitty. for the same person on every single one of these, keep yours up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's trying to drop me. Get out of here. So, one of that is going quick. Let's finish this because we have, let's finish this because we have like three minutes. So, real quick, we don't actually really feel uh, the way that we actually represent it. So, I thought that they both did a good job. They actually have opposite roles. So, John is actually a breaker and Matt's a builder, right? And so, we swapped them because we were like, you know what? Let, you guys can say exactly what you always hear from other people, right? And so, I think that they did a pretty good job. Um, in general, who thought of that? So raise up if you thought, raise up, raise up how fast we tricked you about social engineering. Uh, so raise your, raise your thing if overall you think the breaker run won, and raise it if you think the builder won. Builder, builder, builder. builder, builder. Oh, oh, man. Builder, yeah, breaker. Builder. Obviously. It's builder. actually kind of split. But it's actually half and half. It is. That's pretty good. That's good. All right, cool. Um, so. The thing is, is that we wanted to take a hard stance on both of these to basically elicit participation. Because as soon as we start doing that, you go, like, no, no, that's BS. I'm coming up on stage. Uh, we also wanted to get everyone to kind of come to some type of conclusion that some of the current models that we represent as security people are broken. And we wanted to generate a conversation on how we can all make it better, right? And so that thing that we were talking about, about security is sometimes broken inside companies. So we need to actually, rather than yell at the developer, fix the security process that we're representing. Um, so that's what it is. So we have some general takeaways. So first is, is developers aren't, we are not doing a good job as security people to get developers involved, right? We're basically just saying, hey, fix this, blah, blah, blah. If your development team knows you on a first name basis, not because you went over there and introduced yourself, but because you went over there, because you keep sending them reports, you're not doing a job. Like, you need to go have a personal relationship with your developers. Um, you also need to be respectful. Right? I think security people, we forget how fast we are about being smart asses, and we just think that we are God's guests. And developers, to some extent, they have just as good skill sets, just in a different group. Uh, and at the end of the day, if, if the developer and security guy are in a company together, and they need to do layoffs, guess who's getting laid off first? <laughs> right? All right, two minutes. The last, the last thing is, here, <laughs> So the security guy gets laid off through the developers. Totally. Yeah. There's totally. like ten times as many developers that you're actually here. Rightfully so. Developers, developers will be out. If we're on the security side, right? Just just as a developer, you don't have like two or three security guys. You can't fire us. All right. Fear. Fear. All right. Security guy got laid off from Zynga. So the last thing is. That's a good point. There you go. Yeah. So Zynga, by the way, there is no security people. That is true. So, 
Security people need to, um, the thing about getting dirty is, is that to some extent security people need to embed themselves with these dev teams. They need to go in, they need to introduce themselves, get really accustomed to working with these people, help train them, help educate them, whatever, so that their opinion is actually represented. Um, and if you kind of think about it the way that QA is done, QA is very, very uh, comfy with the development team. So that's pretty much it. We want to thank uh, the following people. We knew Josh would represent at some point, so we just threw his face up there too. Um, so thanks, and if you guys have any questions, we can uh, talk later. Final thoughts or comments? We're done. Thank you very much.